Hey everyone, welcome to our van. We've been living in our Ford Transit self-converted camper van for eight months now. We spent some time out west and over the winter months we have been in Florida. The last few weeks we've been mooch docking with family and we're getting ready to get back on the road. That means it's time to uh, do some inventory. We're going to see if there's anything in the van that needs to go because we've got such limited space and we're going to reorganize some things. With only 60 square feet of living space, what we put or keep in the van, how we do things, and how our systems and technology run is all pretty important. Before we get started on our next adventure, we're sharing what we do to get the van ready and the upgrades we've recently made. Are you ready? Let's do this. After eight months in the van, we're starting to learn a thing or two, realizing we probably don't need everything that we initially packed in. It's been a process over the months of kind of auditing each little section and determining whether it needs to stay or go. So now we're doing a, a real big audit and figuring out what stays and what has got to go. Steve does not like stuff. If he had to say, everything would probably go. <laughs> that is true. I was chatting with a van life friend last night, and we were saying he's another dude. And we were like, it was up to us. It would probably just be a mattress in the van, nothing else. I mean, Steve wouldn't eat anything. There'd be no stove or fridge. We'll see how we'd do if I weren't around. <laughs> um, so, in addition to organizing and going through stuff, we, are, we have a little checklist of things that we have to get done before we get on the road. One of those was replacing one of our fans that had stopped working. So Steve did that this morning, and in order to do that, he cleared out this closet up here. So we're taking that opportunity to start with this full-length closet, taking everything out, and we're going to repack. And hopefully some things will not stay. They'll go. One of the things I really like in the van is inside our closet, we use this shoe organizer. And it holds a lot of stuff, but I think there's a lot of things we didn't really use. So right now I'm working on organizing all that. One of the many things on our checklist is to work on a refrigerator. We really like this refrigerator that we got from Rec Pro, but one of the drawbacks is that the freezer section builds up a lot of frost to the point that we can't even open the door. So we have to uh, work on defrosting that right now. We can fit a lot of food in this fridge. A lot of people marvel that we can fit a whole gallon of milk. Steve loves his milk. Does the body good. So I've turned the power off to the refrigerator. Put some towels down to catch the water and letting the Florida heat do its thing so that one day we can actually open this again. We're making some good progress here. We've been at this for a couple hours now. The freezer is almost defrosted and we have a pretty good pile here of stuff that we're taking out of the van. Uh, just a few things of note. I had this whole toolbox with my jewelry stuff. I have some hobbies and things, and I had stuff for that. And I've just realized it's not practical for all the travel we've been doing, so that's going to come out of the van. There's more jewelry stuff. We try to be thrifty, but we realize now that we're in the van, our expenses are lower, and it's not that much to buy some things that we need. I had done things like kept some small gift bags, tissue paper, things like that. We're just taking them out. If we need some, we'll buy some. I have extra hair stuff, hair bands. It's kind of funny. I think what happened is we were in a rush when we were getting in the van and a lot of stuff just came in here. Too much of everything. Uh, bags we're not using. Extra washcloths. This colander that we really never hardly used. It took up too much space. Some extra utensils. Uh, some shoes. A water bottle. We thought we'd use this in case it was cold. Uh, or for like medical reasons, but we never used it, so we're just taking it out. And another thing that took up a lot of space, I had this giant toiletry bag, and that's going to go too. So, we're making some progress. Well, here's a look at what the main part of our closet looks like with our shoe organizer. 
we basically have in here a sewing kit, some hair stuff for me, like my brush, some jewelry, my little organizer for jewelry. We've got some extra toiletry stuff like chapstick and extra shampoos, like little bottles, because we try to stick to little bottles. Some medicine in here, some first aid stuff that we can take with us when we're hiking. We've got some smaller bags for when we want to hike. And that's pretty much it. It's amazing what will fit in here. And then in the back, we have some games. Rummy cube and some other things. We have this uh, insert that I made for the Max Air fan. And we're going to have to work on putting all our clothes back in. And then up at the top, we have a lot more space now. We have our towels. We have Steve's toiletry bag. What we've done in the back is put our winter stuff like scarves and hats and gloves in a bag. That In the very back, since we don't access that much, we have extra toilet paper. I have some scarves. They're pretty scarves. Sweatshirts. Grocery bags. Reusable grocery bags. Some washcloths. Our fire extinguisher. And that's pretty much it. And then down in the bottom, we have our cooker, we have our laundry, and we have space for our laptops. We also have a uh, soft cat carrier in case of an emergency with the cat. And then I have my camera there right now. That's one of the last things we're trying to figure out where I'm going to keep my camera. So I think we've done pretty well. Now we're going to sort through our clothes, fit stuff back in, and then work on some other parts of the van. Our defrost project is coming along nicely. I think we're ready to clean everything up and start putting things back in. Look at this. Woohoo! Can actually open the door and see inside. Well, we've been making some progress here in the van. Feels really good to be sorting through everything. Tonight, my project is going through all of my clothes. Some stuff's going, some stuff's staying. Most of it's staying, but I am definitely getting some stuff out of here. Kitty supervising here. Right, Kitty? I'm supervising. So I would say the closet's looking pretty neat. Where the kitty is is where my basket goes back in. She likes to be in this cupboard. We have one more full day to get ready to get back on the road. Tomorrow we're going to do some laundry. Got to fit a little bit more clothes in here. Hopefully not too much, though. Uh, we got a few other things to check off our list, and then we're out of here. Well, we've been rushing around trying to get stuff done. We get back on the road tomorrow. So, we did a bunch of laundry. Gotta make the bed now. I gotta take the kitty out for a walk. Uh, yeah, we're going through our list of uh, items that have to be done, one by one. I guess that's how you do it. Here goes the bed sheets. I always feel like a, uh, are you going to help, Kitty? <laughs> no. I always feel like a contortionist or <laughs> gymnast doing this. But I think I'm getting better at it. We used to, we used to both have to do it, but now I've gotten better doing it just by myself. One of the last things I'm working on tonight is figuring out some of the potential places for us to travel to this year. We have a pretty great tool that our friend Bill has created, Chasing70Degrees.com. And essentially, you can set your comfort zone. You can set the nightly lows and nightly highs, as well as the daytime lows and highs that you're comfortable with. And then there's a slide that you can move back and forth with the dates, and you can look at the country and it'll show you what areas of the country fall within your comfort zone. So there's blue dots to show if areas are colder than your comfort zones, Green is spot on, that's your comfort zone, and then red, too hot. You can also click on the dots to see what the min and max temperatures are for that date, humidity, precipitation, and how many years the data has been collected. So basically what Bill has done is he's taken temperatures over a period of time and averaged them together. So it should be pretty accurate. So that's what I've been toying with here, looking at the whole country, seeing where it would make sense to go as we drive throughout the summer and fall. 
Um, I've actually been a little surprised. There's been more red dots, especially in the Midwest and the Northeast during the summer months that I would not have expected. Um, and it basically shows that there's limited areas to go in the middle of the summer if you don't want to be too hot, which is pretty important in a van and with a cat. So it looks like we're looking at a lot of the Northeast, some of the Northern states, and the Pacific Northwest as possibilities for summer months. And then possibly going a little bit further south as it gets a little bit cooler, and then back to Florida for the winter. So it's pretty great for planning. Check it out, chasing70degrees.com. We have found it really useful, and it's kind of fun to play with as we figure out what we want to do. Well, it's go time today. We've got the van all packed up, and we're going to start heading north to make our way out of Florida. We've uh, used these past four months to make some much-needed upgrades, as well as to thin out some stuff that we just didn't need in the van anymore. So, before we get on the road, we're going to show you some of those things. So one of the much needed upgrades that we made was getting our inverter working. We have a 2000 watt rich solar inverter that we got from Rec Pro, and we'll put a link below to that inverter. Um, we blew the fuse shortly after we started back in July because our current, our setup at the time was drawing too many watts and I didn't realize it at the time that uh, you can't only have so many watts to the inverter with a fuse it'll blow so learned that the hard way so got the inverter working and now it works great as we're traveling and driving we can be charging our EcoFlow Delta battery our in-house battery and it's probably about four times uh, as strong as using um, the cigarette lighter the 12 volt lighter um, outlet so charges four times as fast keeps our battery up and running it's really nice that is really nice, especially on cloudier days where we're not bringing as much in on solar and we're not driving as much. It's kind of amazing how much we can charge the battery just driving a short amount of time. So that's been a game changer for us. That's been a great thing. So part of what makes the whole inverter work is the fact that we have a Delta system now that we can regulate how many watts it's drawing when it's charging. It's the EcoFlow Delta 2. When we started back in July, we had the EcoFlow Delta 1300, I believe it was. Maybe it's an 1800. Regardless, that particular model could not be tra uh, regulated how many watts it would bring in. I think it would bring up to like 1100 watts. And that was just too many for the fuse. Um, so now we can regulate it. Uh, we can set it at 500 watts max, which is well under the capacity for the fuse. So it works wonderfully as we're driving. Um, one of the other problems we had with the old Delta was that the inverter on the system itself didn't work. So we couldn't ever charge up our laptops or whatever else we wanted to charge. So it became a real problem. Um, the inverter on the EcoFlow Delta II is working like a champ. And so everything is, is great. So we are actually quite frustrated uh, with EcoFlow with our last unit. It was kind of our own fault though. We waited too long to contact them and it was out of warranty. We should have contacted them when we first started having the problems with the inverter. We had other problems, as you guys have seen, if you followed along, uh, as we would travel when we were traveling back to Florida, just all kinds of issues with bringing in solar and all that kind of thing. So you might wonder why we got another EcoFlow, but we just decided after research, it still made sense. We still like their product and getting a new one, it fit in the same spot. So that was pretty big. And then the benefit with this new one is that it's actually got Bluetooth and we can see how things are charged with our phone. Instead, before we had to get down under our bed and see what the reading was on the screen. So now we can monitor it on our phone. That's a big plus. So we're happy with that. The unit, like I said, is about the same size as our last one. So it fits in the spot that we have. Um, it's got a little bit lower capacity than the last one but not that big of a difference and it was a lot cheaper after the several years that we had the last one. So I would say we're pretty happy with it. Another nice benefit of going with EcoFlow Delta is they offered a five-year warranty with this one whereas the last unit only had a two-year. So all things considered we went back with them and so far we're, we're happy. We don't have any kind of partnership with them. We actually were a little disappointed in the fact that they didn't help us more when we did contact them when we had problems but 
uh, their support seems to be fine as far as like how quickly they respond and again the quality of the product so there you have it we've also mentioned in one of our previous videos that we have new laptops another game changer so it feels nice this time getting ready for our season two if you will of travel to feel like we have everything kind of working properly with technology with the van and just you know that supports our work in youtube so maybe you could say we're we feel like we're not rookies anymore <laughs> i'm sure we'll still make our mistakes and, and learn from them but we have some uh travel and experience under our belt now where we know what's what a little bit better and yeah. If things break, so who knows, we could get on the road and something might break right away, but at least we've tackled all those things that if you've been following along, you know how painful it's been over the last several months, all those things that weren't working. So, or at least it's a clean start, things are working well now, and we hope that'll continue for a while. So after we took care of the big ticket items, we went to some of the more housekeeping type stuff, we did some touch up paint around, I changed the oil, made sure our fresh water supply was all topped off and uh, just the little things start off the, the trip on a good foot. Obviously you have to get water along the way and you have to change the oil uh, every so many thousand miles depending. So you got to do that along the way anyway, but it's always nice to start off with on a, on a good footing. Here in the van under the sink we have one six gallon tank for fresh water and then one for gray water and then we have one in the garage as well another fresh water so that lasts us a good while i think usually our one tank of fresh water lasts about a week or so and then we have to switch it out so that's our setup with that it's pretty simple and we like it in addition to our under the sink six gallon tank we also carry with us three one gallon fresh water um, jugs, um, part of the cleanup organization thing that we did uh, over the last few months was found a, a nice basket where we can store a couple gallons of the fresh water and then we found a spot under the sink for the other one gallon tank. So before we kind of had it all all over the floor and it looked it, terrible. It was, yeah, it was kind of a mess. So we helped kind of clean that up, organize that a little bit. And now it's working great. And we have a fourth in the back, don't we? That's true. We have one, one gallon jug in the back. So to recap, we have two six gallon jugs that we use for uh, dishes and things like that. And then we carry four one gallon jugs for more for drinking water. Yeah. So the water with the sink, is mainly for washing dishes, brushing our teeth, stuff like that. We have a foot pump and it's great so we don't use too much. I think when it's motorized you just go through a lot more water so we actually really like our simple setup. And then part of the reason we have the smaller jugs for drinking water is it's a lot easier to get more drinking water that way. So when we go to Planet Fitness in the library usually there's those water filter um, stations where the fountains are and we just refill our drinking water there and then like Steve said we found places to tuck them away and it does look a lot better now we had them like lined up on the floor where you could see them before it looks a lot better now so now here's where two of our jugs are and we like that a lot better and here's our other jug we had to move some things around because that's where the cat food was before but that's where the jug is and it's easy just to pull it out and put it back in. All right, and we also did something in the back. We added trim here. We love this window, something a little different than other vans, and we love that we have the ledge at the back, um, but we didn't quite like how it looked. So we found this trim and added it, and I think that adds a nice touch. Over the last few days, we've been showing you what we've been doing to get the van ready inside our living space. We also want to give you a little peek into our garage now. All right, so here's a look at our garage. It, I don't think it looks a lot different from when we got on the road before, but we definitely streamlined things. Um, if you're new to our channel, we've got our bikes in here. We have an inflatable kayak in one of these bins and some other stuff. We've got some winter things because we will be on the road for several seasons possibly. Um, we have an air compressor here that we've done a video on that we have just in case we have any trouble. And something new. 
We have new chairs. We loved our Tommy Bahama chairs. They were great for the beach. They were nice because they had like you carry them on your back and had pockets, but they were just too big in here. So we got these new chairs on Amazon that we love. We'll put a link in the description below. They just kind of fold out. You put them together. They got a little comfortable seat. They're perfect. And here's what we mentioned before. Here's our other tank for water, our other jug for drinking water. And uh, I'd say that's about it. We also have our old Delta unit just in case because that'd be horrible if we were on the road and our current Delta went bad. So we have that just in case for backup. Um, I think that's about all that's worth mentioning. Maybe the other thing is we also have a backup computer. We kept Steve's old computer in case we have a problem with one of ours because we've learned that that's horrible to be without a computer. So there you have it. Other than that, we did a few other small things. Uh, for example, I put magnets on the edges of our curtains to keep the curtains closed easier along the side. Switched out our towels. I have a fun new little towel. Let's flamingo. Um, and there were some things on our checklist that we didn't get to. That's okay. Maybe next time when we're back in Florida, we can work on checking off some more things. But overall, I think we're pretty happy with the progress. I think it's time to go. All right, let's go. Excuse me. You forgot to say anything about me. Oh, hi, Siggy. How could we forget about you, our special artificial intelligence supercomputer? Well, I guess I'll get over it. You also forgot to tell people to hit the like button and leave a comment so you know they're watching. Thanks for that reminder, Siggy. We also want to thank our patrons who support our channel. Hey, before I go, I got a joke for you. I just got 9 out of 10 on my driver's test. The last guy was able to get out of the way. <laughs> um, I don't think the cat got it. I'd like to hear you tell a joke.